Hello and welcome to the Mental Health Hotline. If you're delusional, press 7. Please try your call again later. And we're back, everybody. Welcome back. This is Knowledge, Nonsense, and Reason. You might notice that there is only one of the three fun guys in front of this camera today. That is what's happening today. We're going to go on a fun magic ride. John, Miguel, miss you guys. Uh, and But it's okay, because you know what? We're going to go out of our realm of comfort today. Cool. And, and we're going to have to go out of the fun guy garden out here in some of the divine studios we're gonna have to travel a little bit i might need a rocket shout out to jeff bezos come on you bought fuck sponsor us amazon i'm a fan so let's do this let me give you the intro today today this man might seem a little foreign but he's not he but he is from out of this world you might think he rolled out of bed but no he might have just came from space <laughs> we got pipe <laughs> Hey, hey, bro. What's up, you bro? like that? <laughs> that was probably one of the best intros I've ever had in my life. I hope so, man. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm happy to have you on, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So welcome on. So uh, just, to, just to give the crowd a little background, all the millions upon millions of fans, obviously. <laughs> um, this happened super random. I just hit you up out of nowhere from, from seeing your story partying at space so well, or so i thought you were partying networking. You're, you're, you're networking, in, you were know, well it's always networking in it's miami all, it's always networking absolutely but you were you were on the clock man you were working networking you were doing everything <laughs> but partying huh no you know you, you give yourself leeway <laughs> absolutely so um so how so how did we get here how did we end up networking at space on the clock so I I for say like I don't actually like work inside of the club. No, I know, but like you work but with with I, them. You know, yeah, I work for the company. I work yeah. at Space Park, and then you know, um, like I had the opportunity. I've hospitality and tourism has always been my thing. You feel I, me? I went to school for it. Uh, I've always been in the restaurant industry, and you know, I've techno is my first love. So like, it's I've always followed space to that certain extent. Absolutely, man. Come on, it's a it's an institution it's you know it's it's a it's a, not only like a miami brand but like this is a world right now yeah yeah no it's global they yeah like there's multiple oh, around the world they they, they have the one in miami there's one in ibiza as well now there's one in ibiza but that's not uh, they're not actually like um associated, associated. so so, so would you say that's a franchise or just totally different labels at that point i know i think at that point it's totally different labels. really don't, okay don't quote well, me on that oh but I, I do know hey, that ibiza hey bro <laughs> dude ibiza we're not a fucking cnn are, bro it's okay are separate though it's okay uh, you could say shit fuck and wrong answers no. uh, here under under the the club space uh umbrella would yes. be space uh floyd the ground really on the first oh floor. i didn't know that yeah that's all of them on the first floor and then you have a uh, space park now in uh, little haiti little haiti uh i had the opportunity just because you know just like everyone else, we got we got hit by the pandemic hard. Absolutely. Uh, the hospitality industry in itself, the entertainment industry in itself, took a very big hit in that. Um, and then there was a quick, you know, the open call. Come apply, come up, come by, come apply, and fuck it, dude. Yeah, man. I Why felt not? like to the moon, as they say, right? Bro, like honestly, I felt like Willy Wonka, and like I, I got the golden ticket. Also, oh, you were Charlie. Yeah, I, I was Charlie. So I got the So, which one ticket. of your grandparents that pretended to be crippled got out of bed? None. I left them. You left them, right? <laughs> like, they no, actually were. They, no, they weren't I'm lying. Good. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, sorry to sidetrack, but that always that always haunted me. Yeah, like come they, on, they're bro. always embedded. Oh no, we can go now. Like I, I, Grandpa I can walk, Joe, actually. huh? Yeah, I can actually walk. Yo, my bad. Hey, for those who don't know, Grandpa Joe's a whole ass and whole ass <laughs> motherfucker. Come on, bro. This fucking guy, twenty years, I can't walk. Char poor Char Charlie Beckett. Is that the name? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Bitch, it might be, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? So, fucking Charlie over here. Oh, look at me. I got a gold ticket. Oh, Grandpa Joe, fucking. That yeah, guy he, sprung dude, it to He action. jumped up. Bro. Got ready and everything. We like, should have put this guy like, in the Olympics, swear to God. He, bro, it was crazy. But anyways, no Grandpa Joe. No Grandpa you're, Joe. You're, you're, you're there at the open call. What's happening? I went for the open call. Uh, it was, you know, they were looking for some additional help for uh, the... The uh, three points, uh, the beach party. Really, yeah. the one in Virginia Key, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. So I went in. Uh, I, you 
you know, I had the opportunity. They're like, yeah, I'll come work for the for the festival. Fire. Not entirely for the club, but for the festival. But I'm like. Now, would you say that was like a tryout? 100%. Absolutely. I, I've, okay. I, honestly, the nightlife industry, like, I've. Every night, it's like a trial. Every, bro, it's like, so it's, not even nightlife, but like just like the hospitality, especially at this point, man. It's, it's, because it's like cut rate. It's I, cut rate, not cut rate, it's cutthroat. It's cut. No, fuck it, it's cut rate too. <laughs> sometimes, like you're like we're fucking getting jibbed at times for yeah, sure. So, Absolutely. And but, uh, so I had the chance. I went in. You know, I'm at this point. Like I, I'm a bartender. That's that's what I do and everything. But uh, afterwards, you know, this isn't your typical like restaurant. You know, you're going into a nightlife industry. Yeah. This is two steps. You got to be quick. It's bottles and everything. Uh, it went through. Uh, I guess they they maybe liked how I performed, and then they they told me I was like, look, maybe right? Come yeah, on, don't yeah. be too humble, asshole. No. Come on, <laughs> they liked you. They kept you around. Well, you, you, did thing, well. Though, the, you did well. You did well. Again, I'm coming in as a bartender. Yeah. So then they're just like, right now we, we're not we're like we don't have space in bartending. For the for the park team, there, there was no space in space. There was no space at space, but for that space, that oh, for that space. But they, but there was a space for you. I, I space. told them, uh, yo, I don't mind if I'm changing trash cans at this point. Like I okay. just need my foot in the door. Wow, 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 wow. And I took that opportunity and I ran with it. <laughs> Absolutely, that's awesome, dude. And that, but, but but just to stick with that for a second, man, uh, that's big of you. That's big of you. Come on, like, cause in the because look, being a bartender, we have fucking egos. Oh, I'm right. I'm, I'm very, I'm a very cocky person. And Rightfully it's, or it's not, my downfall. I don't know. Like, and it's that's something downfall. like, and and that's something that like has always stuck with me. You know, because like, I almost view like a service staff as like a rock band in a way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So your managers are like, I don't know, it's like your drummers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need them, and but they're they're pacing. Or, you know what, okay. maybe like a bass, actually. They're supposed to be in the background, but without a bass, you don't have a fucking song. You need the bass line. You, you need a bass. You need, you need it, the but it, it's not supposed to be the most prominent thing you th you see. Because okay. let's face it, it's mostly your servers and your bartenders. Yeah. You know? So your host, I guess, would be the drummers at that point. Your host, bussers, whatever. Okay. Right. So then your servers, guitarists. Yeah. Yeah. Or... It's interchangeable, I guess, depending where you work at. But I'm saying for yours, like, if you were to have servers in your situation, they would be the guitarists because the bartenders would be the lead singer. Well, no, honestly, at least at the club, I feel like the, the, the lead singers would probably more than likely be, like, the bottle girls. But you know what, then? Then I guess the servers, I guess, for, like, a better term. Yes, would, the, would be the, the, the servers, the bottle girls, because, you know, I, at the end of the day, like, oh, oh, no, at my job, the ones bringing in, like, the clientele, and then you got the sparklers, you got the shows. Oh, like, you know what? Yeah, you're sorry. Gonna see I'm thinking about from, it. You're going to see I'm them from across the From, like, a restaurant standpoint. Yeah. True. Yeah, no, no, but you're right. Like, see, because, like, at my job, well... See, this is this is where the ego goes back in. When I was a server, I was like, we're the rock stars. When I became a bartender, we're the rock stars. So I so going back to that, for you to say, hey, I'm willing to throw away the fucking trash bag just, get, just, just, just to get a foot in the door. When I'm sure when I, when I'm sure you had other opportunities that might have been more financially lucrative at that point in time. And I, I, I said, was a full time bartender at that time and exactly. I, I, I but you're like, fuck out, this, like, this is what I want. And yeah. And that's cool, and, that, and that's something that's something you see specifically in Miami, bro. Because everybody has a fucking ego here. Huge, 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 it's huge, it's huge. So, and then it paid dividends. And uh, not yet, you know. Well, it, is it paying? It, it, it paid dividends in, in the extent of where like I'm working in an environment that I'm You're, genuinely obsessed with. It but doesn't see, feel like I'm working. But, but okay, but see, but I think that's dividends unto itself because oh, yes, because especially right now where we're at, where especially right now we're working in the hospitality in general is just a fucking nightmare for, for like a better term it's it's intense right now bro. it's very intense it's very intense it's short staff and then it's short staff and then the people you do get are not you know the yeah. ideal choices because the ideal yeah. choices <laughs> to be nice i don't want to call people fucking morons or anything but Oops. you know did I, did I do that did i did i do that <laughs> you know so <laughs> But, but I feel you though. Like, but so you, so so for someone that is capable to make that choice, I don't know. I find that commendable. I do. I appreciate that. No, absolutely, man. And not to you know blow you off too hard. You know, <laughs> but I appreciate but, that. but you know you you got to give props to it, especially right now where people just shit on you day day in and day out. Maybe not you specifically. I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I don't know your fucking life. You know, that's what we're here to do. But uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Just, just working as working as a server, bartender, whatever, man. From nine out of ten times, bro, people are they're quick, they're impatient. Psst, like psst, 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 psst. that's a trigger. Yes. 
that's a fucking trigger. Like, I'll flip the fuck out on yeah. somebody. And honestly, the whole, like, snapping at you. Oh, or, bro. Oh, I start snapping back at them when I pull up. I'm like, hey, guys, I'm here. No, I just said, over here, like, I'm, I'm not a dog. Like, I just said, like, I'm, I'm oh, not a no. dog. Don't, uh, don't, don't clap at me. Don't, like, you know, like. Oh, no, dude. I've been in the biz way too long. Ask me to sit I just and snap back at treat. you. Like, I just no. snap back at you. No. But, so, we're at Space Park. Now, let's go back. Okay. You've been doing this for a while. We're here. We're, we're, you're, you're now in a location that you're happy to be at, yes. which is, is a rarity. Yes. It's a fucking rarity right now, which is with all these jobs available, nobody's happy. How crazy is that? Is it's, that? That's why like, I've, I feel like I got something. No. <laughs> other, you, than, other, than got COVID, something big. No, other than COVID, I got something else positive out of it, you know? That so like, it, it, was, it was pretty great. Like, um, uh, well, and, and I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that had to be the funniest COVID joke I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like it was it was it was great man and then just uh in the dividends and when you say dividends the way i see it is just like i have now an opportunity to like work in a well still the same industry this is just like a completely different field and like it's still, Why? it's a field that i genuinely like I'm, I'm i'm obsessed so we're at space park now great you're you're, you're in a location that you're happy so now what are the locations that led you up to here like what's your experience that led you up to this point Okay, so um, I've I've sort of worked a little bit of everywhere in the hospitality industry. Uh, this is my first time stepping foot into like the nightlife scene, uh, but I've done you know your hotel job from front desk and overnight when I was up in Pensacola. Uh, I did fast food. My first job ever was at a, the Steak and Shake out in West Kendall by by the Walmart. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, one five two repping out, bro. It's funny because uh, my guess from like two weeks ago. My buddy, Captain Steven, Captain Steven, everybody, um, he worked at that same steak and shake at one point in time as well. Uh, that steak and shake was a nightmare, man. Bro, everybody's nightmare. Oh, I mean, not mine because I would go be a guest, but you're a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, and you know, that's your first job. I'm still in high school, so it's my weekend job. So it was like, I'm doing, I'm doing school life Monday through Friday, and then Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, I was working the graveyard shift. Making milkshakes. Steak and shake. So, but yeah, so I did that. Um, I got, you know, I worked at a Mellow Mushroom. And a Mellow Mushroom, actually, that's where I met, like, a, a lot of my friends, like, in the in the industry as well, like, in the nightlife industry. Uh, my good friend Lauren, like, she's a photographer, and she she works at the club as well. Yeah. Um, then I, I first, like, got, like, into, like, the bartending scene, I guess, would be more towards 2015, 2016. I, don't know, I, uh, I went into Apisco y I don't know. Making those milkshakes, you were probably, you know, here. Yeah. You're, you're flaring. You were like, where's my fucking whipped cream? I need my fucking whipped cream, and I need it now. No cherries on top, and you don't get a thank you, right? Ooh. I'm kidding. Ooh. But, no, you know, I, I did it with, uh, with Pisco and Asuka. Uh, from there, I was able to also bartend at this uh, small Asian spot in uh, Melbourne called uh, Red Ginger. What was that? Like, bartending in Melbourne? Surprisingly, well... It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, cause you know I'm I'm here thinking you know I'm leaving from Miami to like this was fucking back Melbourne. Then, it's Melbourne and dude. in 2015 like it, there was fucking nothing out there. And also you were what at that point like 2021? 20, no, no, I was already 22, 23. I was this yeah. was right before I left to college. Okay, right before no. I left to uh, UWF up in Pensacola. Okay. And then so like I'm there and I thought it was gonna be like a little slow or whatever, but there's a lot of <laughs> old alcoholics out there. So the happy hour was always slammed. What was the happy hour? Uh, two for one martinis. Jesus. Yeah. So it's like you're drinking straight like liquor. And that's an old. Per, that's an old alcoholic drink too. Like. And and I'm talking about, mind you, these are strong spirit forward drinks, and these people are having three, four of them, like five of them. Uh, pennies on the dollar. And no, not even that. It's just like you're like 65, 70 years old. How are you <laughs> drinking this much right now? Like it was terrifying, but the money was good. Uh, you know, feeding the ego, like you said, like as when I started bartending, I'm I'm used to like, where's the hot girls or like, where are they? I want to hit on someone. I don't want to hit on like 55 year old Susan. Why not, bro? Not my alley. That's not your alley, not huh? My alley. What's up? What What is it for you? Too much experience? <laughs> <laughs> you don't like being manhandled. What is it? 
Cause I don't know, bro. Straight up, like I, I, I might be the weirdo here. I don't know. I feel like she might have like a pacemaker on or something. Bro, like, bro, she's keep, she's keeping the pace for you, dog. She, bro, she, that that's for her and for you. I call that consideration personally. Okay. No, I'm okay. kidding. I'm talking mad shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm full of it. Oh, if I were with a lady and she had a pacemaker, I'll be like, yo, I'm gonna fucking kill this person, bro. Honestly, like you some know, of them being a young stallion, I'm sure too. You know, yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> so like no, it, it was it was weird because you know you, like they're coming in like genuinely like some of them were coming like with, in walkers or like in the electric chairs and so like these were like genuinely like old retired people but they're slamming martinis like better than most people i've seen here in miami yeah so then you no know, i left for college and college i kept off with my hospitality and tourism i was doing for restaurant management at that point uh through there I worked at a small, well, sort of small, but it was a bar. Best burgers I've ever had, though. It's called the Tin Cow. Tin Cow. Everybody. Tin Cow, Pensacola, Florida. Great burgers. Let's give them a fucking shot. You know, quick, you know, great burgers. <laughs> um, and I was there for, you know, my, my time in Pensacola. Uh, from there, I'm like, this is not for me. I'm, I, I'm like, I... I left for college because I wanted to get a Miami, like the out of state, out of Miami experience. So I went to the farthest point in Florida. Different time zone. Like I got as far possible from Miami as I could. Made me realize I could not live outside of Miami. Oh, what a what a plot twist, huh? Uh, as soon as I had the chance, I transferred back down to FIU and I, I kept it going down here. What was the what was what was the moment? What because like I'm I'm sure there had to be one 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 moment that like either threw you off the edge or you were like fuck what did i do well one there's heavy racism up there you know everything is you know it's um, i could be colombian he speaks mexican they call or, you a mexican or, or he speaks mexican or i don't understand mexican or you know how crazy he speaks mexican or, or puerto rican for some reason it's mexican or puerto rican don't get it but it's they don't even know what a cuba is over there huh no no they, they don't know what it is what Honduras? What? No, they don't know. Honduras? That. Yeah. Uh, Anders? Anders? I don't know no Anders. So it's it, it's it's bad. So that was one of them, and then like I I had a I had a, a little run in with the law. I had to do a little bit with the racial profiling too, but it left a bad taste in my mouth. But you know, I felt like that was an experience I had to go through. Changed a lot of things the way I, like I, I looked at life in a way. Then I came back down, and then when I was down here, you know, I, I went through your typical, like, I've always been a strong person, like, a strong believer in, like, if you're not happy somewhere, like... What are you doing? Fuck that. Like, don't, don't stay there. Yeah, no, and, and I've, I've noticed that just from listening, because not once have I heard, besides Steak and Shake, you working for a big corporation like that. No. No, see, like, most, like... All my jobs in hospitality have been under big corporations. So it's so it's very interesting to hear that because like I'm super like at this point I don't want to work for a giant corporation ever again. Well, I do. Space. So like Yeah, no. But, <laughs> yeah, okay, no, but dude, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, no. dude, like okay, like uh, like a steak and shake type. You know what I'm saying? Never. Or like a subway, like no. a, own like the own a franchise thing. Yeah. I, I get it as an investment. Oh, yeah. Just, no, but like even just like like just corporate like if you're around the world, I don't want to work for you. Okay. Like, just like, 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 even like, even like an Outback or something, which I, I like Outback, but just uh, being a fucking corporate stooge, you know? It's, it's a lot. And then at that point, you're not, you're not really doing it for the love of the industry. It's more for the money. For the money, which is fine too. I get it. But like, it's like when your managers are bitching at you about things like corporate's going to be upset. Who is this corporate? Who are these faceless people? <laughs> Never seen them in my life. I don't, do they have names? They won't tell you, but hey, I got a message from upstairs. You know, it's, it's the guy upstairs. Hey, corporate told me that we got to do better on, on the liquor. Who, who, who are these people? And then when you meet them, you're like, that's the guy. You're scared of him? That, him. Not even scared, but like, this guy has all the power? Yeah, man. It, Interesting. It, but so, so we're crazy. back. So we're back. We're here. Back, we're back in here. So then and then it's just again, since I wasn't happy, like but the thing is I bounce around a lot with these jobs, but I would pick up a lot of key things in each job. 
I'd work with people who know, like, I've been doing this 15 years, 10 years, 12 years. Like, I'd be working with, like, these older people who've, like, they've been around the block already. They know what they're doing. And so, like, I'll be able to pick up on a lot of things, and I feel like that that also helped me, like, diversify, like, what I actually know in, like, the, the, the industry. Okay. And then I've worked, like, not just one thing. Like, I worked in a Peruvian. I've worked in a, his, in a in, uh, in an American. I've worked in Brazilian. I've Like, I've worked in different types of cultures and different foods where there's, like, different cooking methods or, like, different ways of creating the same cocktail that you see in all the different bars, but they're putting their own twist on it. Like, how to make different syrups because you're brewing different flowers or different, other, like, other things with it. Like, uh, I, I was... Like, it, it sucked in a way where, like, yeah, sure, it didn't last a lot, like, where I was at, but I picked up so much where I was Absolutely. When, when I was there. But, I mean, like, if I'm not going to be happy, I'm... Yeah, but also, it, it seems like it was a conscious choice to do that, though. Like, it's not like you're here getting fired from fucking jobs, you know what I'm saying? Like, it seems like you consciously wanted to not be too long out of place. Right or wrong? I feel like sub maybe subconsciously, man. Really? You think uh, yeah, so? Like, do you think that you didn't mean to, but maybe like being there too long kind of alerted something inside of you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure, but like, I feel like maybe it was like a something subconsciously. That, no, see, because like, see, like for me, like, like even though we're talking about something as minuscule as you know work history, it's mind blowing to me because my work history is the complete opposite. <laughs> like, I've worked in different fields, but I've always been at my jobs for a long time. Like, I think I think the shortest amount of time I've ever been at a job is like a year. Six months, maybe. Oh, no. That's, I think the longest I've been at a job was like a year and change. Oh, oh, no. I'm saying that's the shortest. The longest I've been at a job is like three years. Like, like most of my jobs, yeah. My first, I got my first job when I was 14. Okay. Pushing shopping carts out of Winn Dixie. I did that for two years. I worked at Ralph Lauren after that for two years. Then I had a job selling patents over the phone. Surprisingly, very lucrative. Who would have thought? Oh. Not me. Oh, no. But that was a whole thing. I had to change. I, like, back to, the, back to what you were saying about racial profiling. So imagine, I'm here charging people thousands of, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars, because it wasn't just patents, it was a whole program and everything. It ended up being a scam company, as I found out a year after I left, because <laughs> like, one of my clients called, talking about how they abandoned him, and he was suing them, and it turned into a whole class action lawsuit, actually. Yeah, crazy, crazy. But anyways, so I started off as, you know, being me, Raul, great, right? and then they'll be like, Raul, Raul? Which is actually a running joke now. Like, my friends to this day call me Rao sometimes. Rao. Yeah, they'll be like, Rao? Ra Ra what? And then I was like, this isn't working. And then they were like, are, are you Mexican? Are you Hispanic? And I'll be like, yeah. So then I was like, <laughs> yeah. so like my middle name is Andres. So I was like, you know what? Ironic. Uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to call myself Andrew. Okay. And that changed everything. Crazy. But, but so, so, yeah, I was there for like six months. And then that's where, and then after that, ironically, I started my current job. But look I was there. Just, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that, guys. Don't be a corporate stooge. Don't sell your soul. I did, and I hate it. Um, yeah, I'll fucking say it. And just in case you're wondering, I work for a restaurant. It's based off a day of the week. And no, it's not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, or Sunday. Take a fucking hit. So, <laughs> TGI, okay. right? Thank God. So... <laughs> So, uh, so then I, I, I left after three years and then I went to another job, uh, for another company, which I liked a lot. And then the pandemic happened. The, the pandemic messed up a lot of plans, man. Absolutely. But like so with what you said about well, the selling the patents and stuff. So I, I did, uh, I, I did try this. I stepped out of the hospitality industry for like, I, I did it twice too. So it was like almost, almost a year combined. Oh Yeah. What'd you get yourself into? Doing business loans. <sighs> business loans. And it was, you know, just making calls, getting a percentage. Great money. And honestly, great team of guys that I worked with, like the, the owner, Matt, Matthew. 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 Bro. Matt, whatever. Matty Ice. Uh, dude, he, he's the type of dude that when I first started there year one, he's like, yo, by the, th by the third year, I plan on having already like my own floor in a separate building in different offices. And then, uh, I, the first time around, I worked with him for about six months. I got a chance with him again about a year and a half later, starting year three. When I went into his new, uh, he was moving into his new office wow. with his own floor. He fucking so, did it. Dude, like he was, he's the type of guy that like he said something and he hits it on the, on the head every time. So on this though, you're making calls. 
And again, my name's Andres, and my middle name is Felipe. So it's like it's as Hispanic oh, so, as it gets. Oh, so they're like, "Yo, who's who? Who's this fucking this engine?" You know, bro. Yeah. So it's like I'll get on the phone. Like, hey, how's it going? This is Andres, Andres, Andreas. So Andres. It, yeah, and then you know I I speak very Miami, bro. Like it's. It, se, se me sale con everything the coño the Plus damn, you know, that shit's fire you know like it's it's just a lot of like the Miami slang it's it's embedded in me I had to start a whole new oh, like persona yeah. and I would I started like with my email signatures and everything and I'm on the phone whenever you'd call it be on the voicemail hey hey you've reached Andy Jackson there it is you've reached Andy Jackson thank you for calling me or like hey how's it going this is Andy Jackson yeah Andy huh yeah no I was I was a, I was Andrew Neves. <laughs> and Raul Nieves turned into Andrew Neves. Neves. Hello, this hi. How are you? This, look, actually, you know, I I remember. I, so I had to do cold calls. Same. So Same. I I was averaging at one point like 150 a day. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I had that shit down. So I actually, I actually remember the whole fucking spiel. If you want to hear it. Yeah, yeah. Hi, this is hi, this is Andrew Neves calling from World Planet Marketing, and I know that you got an idea or maybe an invention that you've been working on. Uh, I would love to hear about it. And if and so here's my number, insert phone number here. Uh, and just whenever you have a chance, please call us back again. This is Andrew Neves from World Planet Marketing, and I can't wait to I can't wait to hear about your idea, and hopefully we could get this around the world so they could hear it too. Great customer service voice. Oh, oh, wow. dude, thank you. Oh, bro, I fucking kill it. At work, I lost it, though. Uh, oh, sorry to pick back up. So after I, the pandemic happened and I went back to my old job, it went fucking terrible. Out the door. A super. These motherfuckers are here serving people outside, but they don't even have an outside station. Bro, if it started raining, it's... You're fucked. Motherfucker. Dude, I would walk out with three plates here, one plate here. As soon as I walk out, it's storming. I'm standing, I'm literally standing in the fucking rain, look, looking like a fucking cafeteria train, bro. It was terrible. And then I left. And then where did I end up back? At the Fridays. No, it's, <laughs> it's the one day of the week. No, we can't say the name. It's the one day of the week. That's not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, or Sunday. The one that must not be named. You know? You yeah. know? I mean, I, I get it. Like, honestly, like, after the pandemic, I, I ended up uh, going back to the first place that I was supposed to be working at the same thing uh, uh, pre-pandemic. Oh, Reddit. where is Steak and Shake? No, i <laughs> I, to this day, I worked with them in 2015. No, 2014. 2014, it was my senior year of high school. I worked with them 2014. Since 2014, I have not stepped foot in a Steak and Shake ever again. Wow. I've never eaten it again. Never, like, I... I am like still traumatized, by it. traumatized, PTSD. I, I'm not dealing with it. Wow. Nope. I refuse to. Like wow. it was so bad. That one specifically, or all of them? All of them. No, I avoid steak and shake at this no. point. Like I, no I am scarred, scarred. Wow. Yeah. No, I'm not. I feel that though. Like when I when I no longer work where I work, I'm never gonna go. Like okay, like I'm actually. When we up to Tally in a few months. Oh, nice. So nice, like, nice. That, that's how I, like when you were talking about like Pensacola and, and your reason. I was just like, fuck, dude. Like that's exactly what I'm going through right now. But like I'm not going to school up there. Just uh, I, I just I like it. I've okay. been uh, I got a place there a few months ago. I go once a month for for about a week at a time right now while I'm transitioning, getting everything ready because I'm gonna build a. Uh, I I got a two one over there because imagine, bro, the cost of living over there is stupid. You gotta. I got a I got a two one on a golf course for fucking seven hundred dollars. It's dirt cheap, bro. I'm gonna build a fucking studio in my other room. Imagine. So, but it's also because well, I mean, in Tallahassee is a little different than Pensacola because in Pensacola you can get like a three bedroom apartment, same thing for like about eleven hundred dollars. That's crazy. Uh, but there's fucking nothing to do on, out not, there. On the see Tallahassee, it ends early, but there's shit to do. No, there's nothing to do. Like, in Pensacola, like Pensacola is still like in the process of like flourishing or like getting yeah. or like or more, growing even not as much growing but just getting more modernized okay okay because it's it's a lot of very old school like pensacola is very and old then, school and then just a sidetrack for a moment um how would you say that they're modernizing comparatively to how they were when you were living there oh now like they're they're getting now pensacola is getting hit with the real estate bubble really so now people are going there buying them turning the duplexes tri like you know they, they're just like gotta find more land and then just there's money to be made and then you know pensacola is like a there's like a retired city as well so like there's a lot of people with already just they have their businesses done they have their money so they're just 
they're going in on it. You know, buy wow. this, remodel it, flip it, flipping houses. So wow, so like you're thinking like 20 years old. Yeah, 100. percent And uh, downtown, downtown Pensacola, it's, uh, it was already starting to like boom when I was there. So like, I, it's definitely been growing more now. Wow, 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 that's exciting. Yeah, dude, and entirely imagine my my apartment's down that, down the street from the fucking Capitol, bro. It's it's oh, it's, it, cool. it, it's it's very surreal. So, but. I like it a lot. I'm like, I'm genuinely shocked how much I like it. Like the other day I was, but like, it's, it's very strange. So like, so like, like the other day I almost had a fucking mental breakdown cause just cause I couldn't handle all the trees. Is you're in the middle of nowhere, bro. I've never seen so many fucking natural trees in my life. I, that's why like, I, I'm, I love my mom. I hate visiting her. Oh, cause, cause she's she lives, up there. She lives in Palm Bay. No, Palm Bay. Oh, Melbourne, bro. Dude, there's. Nothing, nothing there nothing, nothing. like nothing. everywhere you look is just all the time. fucking trees trees and roads and it's like the nearest the nearest place where like you can see people gather together is your local walmart that's like 15 minutes driving yeah. away uh, no i like you, i'm so far away from civilization i can't do that no i can't do that and, and it's so crazy being from here and knowing that the rest of florida is like that like I, I, it was a culture shock almost oh, it like is. it, it, it is. was like the state of Miami, the state of South Florida is a real thing. Absolutely. Because once you leave South Florida, once you go, like, once you leave, eh, no, because even still in parts of Central Florida, like, once you leave South Florida, you're back into what Florida is, the swamps. The swamps. You're back in the swamps. Outside of Orlando, right? literally. You're back in the swamps. Yeah, dude, like, I, I, I had an ex-girlfriend that um, her parents li lived in Ocala. Well, citrus. Ocala is even no, like no, less. No, no, actually less than Ocala. Citrus, citrus Springs, Ocala. So this is a suburb of Ocala. So imagine it's fucking population five, bro. <laughs> Literally, bro. You think I'm joking, motherfucker? In their backyard, they built a whole zip line. You know how separate away you gotta be from your neighbors to build a whole fucking zip, zip line, line? bruh? <laughs> Get fucking paqueta, dude. White people shit for sure. The, but. Honestly, I, I, there's nothing there, but it would be fire if I could be like, hey, I have a zip line in my backyard. No, for sure, but like, but living there, like, can't do it. I, I, like, I would have a side house there, a little escape. I have my mom's house. <laughs> like, exactly. Uh, you know? But, and I tried living there for a little bit when I went, when I was leaving to, to school in Pensacola. Yeah. So I stayed with my mom for about two months, and in those two months, I thought I was going crazy. Like, I was just, dude, it was so yeah. much. I had to, like, at that point, solely rely on, like, on social media to be in contact with my friends. Wow. Because, like, I'm only there for, like, two months. I don't know anybody there. And, like, you're not going to start a whole fucking life for two months either. Bro, like, no. It's, and then it's just the people I met at work, they're all viejitos. Like, I, I, I didn't run into anyone my age. Oh, my God. It was so boring. Like, it was just no, so boring. No, dude, like, when we were up in Citrus Springs, Ocala, want to know how long it took us to get to a movie theater? 30 minutes 50 minutes bro. yeah I 50. It. we drove 50 bro the round yeah, yeah. trip the round trip was almost longer than the fucking movie <laughs> <laughs> que, que locura. So, but uh but uh, to go back I, I feel like we strayed a little bit just uh, into dude, the rest of the i Florida. have adhd bro like oh. i'm gonna be hopping all over like the place I'm oh sorry. no i'm just a fuck face i just <laughs> <laughs> i'm just all over the place but uh i want to go back to space so all right so pandemic reopens you go back I go two? back to, uh, this was Red Rooster. Red Rooster, okay. Red Rooster and Red Rooster is where I got, like, back into, like, the craft cocktail scenes, making my own syrups, creating cocktails, you know. At that point, like, you create the experience with the drinks that you make. And now, is that on your own accord, or is that encouraged? Uh, or is that, both. like, the guest, like, wait, like, do you mean, like, more, like, I, I've never been there before in my life, that's why. So, like, especially, like, in a craft cocktail bar like that, uh, you have your, you have your typical cocktail list, you know, it's gonna have a little bit of everything of usually course. covers your your top five liquors um but then obviously when you go to a craft uh, craft cocktail bar there's people who are gonna sit down and be like oh i don't like these things like what can you make me with this or like hey i like this and like i like the taste of cucumber or okay like, what can is wow. i got you i'll make you something wow. you know and then at that point you're you're setting the tone of that experience because wow. people will be like yeah it could be a drink or not but if you go to a restaurant and the first thing you have is a drink and you don't like that drink your standards are already starting to drop for your experience. It's that simple. Absolutely. And then as a bartender, like, they're sitting in front of you. So, like, you're literally making it right in front of them. 
Yeah, no, literally, like, I feel like I'm on deal or no deal sometimes, you know? Yeah, because like, you're watching them, and then, like, you're adding things, and then you sort of see their face, like, hmm. You know, like, I, you know, like, I feel like, do, 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 by the way, I want this added in post. I want the do, do, do lights from deal or no deal. <laughs> I'll do the sound effects. I think I do it better than the actual sound, personally. Do, 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 I think it goes, I don't know. But, no, literally, I'm like, this is, like, if they don't like it, you feel terrible. You do. You do. And then it's just, uh... Like, you see them, and, and at the same time, like, it feels good, like, when you feeding your ego again. You, you, you see, Everybody has them. You, like, when you're making your drinks, like, you see that, like, the bar is watching you. Like, when you're adding things, or they're like, oh, what is he making there, or like that, and then you get the questions, and then, you know, you add your little flair with the shakes, you add your little own touch to it, how you open the, your, your, your shakers, so you turn into a performer at that point. You're absolutely you're, an, you're an entertainer, absolutely. and again, that's part of, like, that experience. So like with that, like I got, I got a little, I got like sort of back into that, you know. Cool. And that was awesome. Like uh, I was able to like freely experiment like with what I wanted to do with my drinks, and you know, sh- shout out to Alex Court, right? You know, love you, homie. But yeah, like it was, it was awesome. Like uh, I, I got to like touch back to the base with what I love after do doing a full year of just mm-hmm. sitting at the crib. Nothing. Yeah, dude. Yeah, bro. Like. Uh, for me, going back to the biz was very strange because I was just postmating and doing Instacart and shit like that. Okay. To like get by, frankly, like because, like I was so disillusioned with everything when shit shut down, Bro. because like at that point in time I already felt compromised. I felt like I've compromised already. I liked my job. It was cool. It was it's still in the biz, but very different. Like it was a breakfast place. We were open from seven a.m. to two p.m. We didn't sell alcohol. Okay, but fire, though. Super fire. Those little breakfast spots usually make oh, pretty good money, oh, bro. Dude, like, no, I was making great money prior. But then remember what I told you after. I'm here standing in the rain looking like a cafeteria tray. So, you know, terrible. So um, so going back to, like, a place like where I work now was just very, uh, it was just strange. And then, so I went back because a uh, former coworker of mine became a manager. And I wanted to work under him specifically. Like, okay. I wanted to work under him. So, and it was financially, it was a great opportunity. Nobody went back. So you're making all the money there. Bro, I'm, I'm, I was averaging 25 to 3,000 a day in sales. Remember, I'm not working at a high end place. Like, oh, that's the crazy part, too. When bro, you're seeing these sales and it's like, you're racking up a hundred dollar check, I have to make like some, not effort, but. You have to put in some work on that because they have to order I, at I least to, three things, bro. Like, like, I could get a two tops check to 100, but I'm fucking selling that ass. Yeah. You know? So, no, bro, I was, I was working 60, 70 hours a week. Easy. Uh, same thing. Same, right, easy. Post-pandemic. Po- like, immediately. And then, like you were saying, like, no one wanted to work. So, at one point, it was just, they were, we were down to three bartenders. Wow. No, like the lead bartenders left. We had no bar back, so we oh. had to come in earlier to make our own juices, prep our own stuff. Cut your own fucking fruit, asshole. Yeah, I, yeah we had to, you know, yeah. set, set up all our things and then break it down at the end of the night. And we're putting in, mind you, 14, 15 hour shifts. Yeah. And we're still doing it. We're st- it's yeah, still, it's still it happening. It has to be done. It's still happening. Like, uh, one of my coworkers, he works 45 hours in three days. Easy. Easy. All right, dude, I'm fucking tired of talking about work. Let's talk about the passion, the fun of it. You were a fan first and foremost of the music, the lifestyle, all of it. Yeah. So coming back from now, we all know pre-pandemic space. I was a fan myself. I, I'm a foreigner. For, foreigner, right? Foreigner, foreigner. right? Well, uh, outer space is a foreign land. Damn. Do aliens need visas? Something to think about at home? Leave your comments, please. Something to think about. But anyways, so I'm a former, you know, astronaut myself, if you will. Space invader. Space invader. There it is. Uh, but uh, I, I haven't gone clubbing at all post-pandemic. You obviously have. So what's that been like, man? I know there's no more cigarettes. I know that's a thing well, now. The, the no more cigarettes, honestly, that's probably been my favorite move that really? the, the, the club, at least space in itself, has done. Uh, but no, the, the biggest difference, because yes, even before like I, I got the chance to work with this company this year, um, uh, Coloma got me a good offer on a table for Martinez Brothers post pandemic. Wow. So, po- which is which is crazy. I finished my uh, like before the pandemic started. I, I we were doing the Miami Music Week events uh, yeah. at Space, like tickets bought, Cascade, Carl Cox was supposed oh, to come the yeah. first time. It was gonna be Bro, psychotic. Miami Music Week was fucking crazy. 
the, but the lineup for that year was probably the best lineup they have had. And this was twenty right for the pandemic, twenty twenty. Oh, that's right, because Miami Music Week is in March. Yeah, oh, like it sh- happened right then and there. Well, like the week of almost, right? Uh, like like two weeks before. No, no, we had we were already starting it off because uh, Cascade wow. Cascade had already done their Redux episode. Wait, so they started in the middle of the month? Yeah, like they had they had already oh, no. some events starting. They oh, had like I said, okay. they had Cascade doing the Redux. They had Lane Eight, Charles Do It that weekend. Wow. It was it was, which I always say, Cascade at space. That's it. I, it lives rent free in my head. Wow, it was beautiful. But so yeah, like I finished off, like I started the pandemic, finishing off at space, and then afterwards, you know, I got I got I got a, a table. Uh, I went with some friends. It was Martinez brothers and Seth Troxler. Because now when they opened up at limited capacity, it was it was just strictly table service. Yeah, um, I remember tables. it was like ten thousand, no, like five or ten thousand a table or something. Uh, for for some spots, for some DJs sometimes, but not. Oh no, it like, starts yeah. off especially when the pandemic first started off. Like you could find some like after tax and tip like seven hundred and fifty. Oh, that's not that terrible. 000. No, because again, like since there was no like, a, quote unquote dance floor. Yeah, but. They turned the whole dance floor into uh, tables. Tables. Yeah, no, and supply and demand. Exactly. That is what but it is. But since there was more tables, then you'd be able to get some more economic tables and then obviously more expensive tables. Um, what I did love, though, is that they increased, like, the gardening game at the club. Like, the, the club in itself already had, like, plants and everything. Yeah. But during that time, they came through and they just put a bunch more plants like it just where you know, like in the terrace you know, like hanging around really? the actual dance floor yeah like yeah, at this point if you walk into a dance floor like a vine could possibly hit you in the wow. face and stuff yeah wow, no, it's, wow, it's, wow. it's really cool and then but it was just strictly tables there are no, no not your bartenders no nothing i had my friend she went from bartending to become like a, a server a bottle girl because it's just that's the only thing that was going just made sense and even pandemic these tables were selling out like the, they were still bringing in these names. I mean, come on, bro. We, 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 we're getting these $1,200 checks, player. Yeah. <laughs> come on, dog. And then that and unemployment's got to go somewhere, <laughs> and I can't go to the movies. <laughs> bro, but it, it, was, it, it, was, it, was, it was awesome, though, because at the same time, uh, at least like from, from a music fan, I'm not like, oh, hey, we're going to go get lit. Or no. Like from a music fan's point of view, it was more intimate when the djs were playing because again you don't have you don't you're not slammed in there like, and you're not like compressed and packed into the dance floor like a sardines yeah. you have your own like sp- space pods per se space yeah pods. so you have your own section you have your own bottles you have uh, every view now you have a good view of the dance floor because there was no one there right. and you're with your people and then the hours since i'm like you know we're still gonna marathon uh we w- i went in at seven in the morning and i left at 11 45 because well, they had to close at midnight you know wow. so you still got your hours in you're still there having a blast but it's just a lot more intimate because a lot less people and also you're in bed by one o'clock how nice is that it was what a, what a change of pace huh no nah, bro because i see your picture sometimes i see you noon boys i i was like i miss noon. it i miss it i miss it is that pre-pandemic realistically if you're from miami you know that for the weekends if you're going out you're just getting ready at like 11 o'clock at night absolutely night's not starting till about midnight and that's still sometimes early and now it's sort of getting back to that a little bit but yeah you you it was like a complete switch you went from hey yo we're getting ready at 11 to all right you know we have to be there by like two in the afternoon because they close (laughs) at seven or they close at eight o'clock tonight so it's it was a big switch but again from from a fan point though awesome a lot more intimate like with the djs a lot less you can you, you experienced it a lot more and i bet that you're, you're just grateful to be there at that point too i was happy it was open again after bro, after a year of fucking nothing it, and that's my happy place bro. If before everything like this place has always been my happy place yeah and so when it opened again i i took it i'm like yo i'm getting a table In, instantly first dj that i want to see that, that pops up and it was martinez brothers and seth Troxler. Wow. so i'm yes getting uh, a table i'm excited to uh go back to like at, like not even just clubbing but just in general like because i haven't gone back and i'm gonna be honest with you um in a weird way it fucking terrifies me right now not even fair. Not, not even because of like i'm not even saying oh i'm like COVID, i mean obviously sure covid it's got to be on your mind whatever but i'm saying just like being around so many people in one room just the thought of it like in like gives me angst not like not even because it's not even the virus just the physical act of being in a room with so many people makes me anxious. 
So it, not like, and we're back to that point right now. I know, which is which is just so surreal to me. Honestly, like at work, even like sometimes I gotta take a breather because this shit's fucking packed the people, and I'm just like, Ugh, what are we doing? But I, I think it also has to do with just like we were so out of it for over a year. Yeah, no, like that it's just you got you're retraining yourself. Absolutely, and absolutely. Because honestly, like first time back again working like that festival. I didn't even go back to work at a nightclub. I wanted to work a fucking festival. Yeah, and. Like, I got sick. Not even COVID, but, like, I just went through, like, bronchitis. Like, I got destroyed, bro. Oh, like, yeah, well. My first time back, and it's, you know, and I know what I was getting myself into. Cause these are 14, 16-hour shifts, and you're out there in the sun. You're out there with the sand. You're out there with the dirt, so I get it. But, wow, it was like, like, I had forgotten how to ride a bike or something. It was it was crazy. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's surreal because, like, you know, you're there literally like, fuck. Okay, I'm working 16 hours, and you're not used to it. You've been at home. You know, all this time, you can't stay away from people. And then you're just seeing mobs of people combining. And you're just like, what the fuck oh, is this? Crazy. What the fuck's happening here? But but we're back, though. But and, we're back. And you know? honestly, the the nightlife scene is... It's, it's, it's popping. It's no. flourishing again. No, dude, it's it's flourishing. And, like, it's exciting being a native from here. It's exciting because even even if I'm not indulging, bro, that's that's a big part of people's livelihoods here. No. Come on, like, how crazy is that? Like, we were just talking about bartending and bragging about it, right? Bartenders were making the least amount of money when shit first reopened. Yeah, dude, it was. It was. A how little crazy hard. is that? How crazy is that? It, it was a little hard because you know, like you had to go back to waiting tables. Yeah. You had to. Yes, well, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not even gonna lie. I had to. Right well, now, I just. Oh, well, no, well, I don't mean you specifically, bro. <laughs> it's, it's not all about you, even though you are a guest. Hey, everybody, we got Pepe on. Don't forget. Um, <laughs> Shameless plug. Oh, dude, I have shameless plugs all over the place. I don't fucking care. It's, I don't. Hey, it's, it's your life, bro. It's your podcast. You're you, you dude, if, if, I, if I'm not going to be shameless on my podcast, where could I be shameless on, you know? It's your only safe space here, bro. Except, except the shower. Showers are always a safe space. You see, I like I like to save my crying for the shower because that way, like, I don't know if it's tears or if it's, like, the water. Oh, you no, know? see? I like tasting them. I cry in my car. <laughs> I like tasting them. I like tasting them. <laughs> They're salty. They're bitter. They're sad. Oh, dude, you don't want to hear about my tears, bro. <laughs> Especially after those shifts. What, well, dude, I, bro, sometimes I'm, I'll, if someone could relate to this, you know what? I'm happy, I'm happy to say it then. Bro, sometimes after my shift, I was like a week ago, I had, I was the bartender and I had, so half the restaurant is dining, half the restaurant is cocktail. I had, so I had one person on dining, I had one host slash busser, because the host and busters, and I had, the whole cocktail and bar and service bar to, for, for myself from 11 a.m. to about midnight. That sounds painful. Oh, I, I didn't, like, I sometimes cry, on, like, as I'm driving. Didn't even make it that far. I just sat in my car and I just boo-hooed all over the place. Because, bro, it's just fucking, it never stops. It never stops. You just got to keep going. Never stop. Don't stop. You, oh, oh, well, you're hungry too bad. Your food's getting cold because no one's going to run it. Fuck you. Yeah, and that's that's honestly how how I felt at, like when when I got back at Rooster, because even though like I was doing what I loved and I was putting on the show and everything, like it was more like we, we still felt like we were sinking. And again, we're, we're not supposed to be that many hours in, but yeah. these are fourteen hours in. And nobody gives a fuck about in. overtime anymore because there's no one else to pay. Yo, I remember before the pandemic, if you were on the clock thirty nine and a half, get the fuck out. And a half I don't hours, care. Get, get off my clock now. I'm not paying you that I don't overtime. care about service. I don't care about side work. I don't care about... Get the get fuck off, off my, my clock. And now it's... Oh, what? You're scheduled 25 hours over? No, no, that's fine. We might need another five hours Keep on top. Keep going. Don't stop. Bro. Do more. Bro, sometimes I go days without eating. <laughs> straight up. Like, straight like straight up. Like, bro, that shit happened to me two days ago. I got off at 2, and I had to be back at 10. Who the fuck has time to eat? Nah, I'll make I'll make time at least. I'll get me a grilled cheese at the club at least, oh, or right, like some oh. pizza at the park. Like I'll, no, I'm, I, I'm gonna oh, get some food in. Okay, okay, like maybe like a little <laughs> but snack I'm a, and go. I'm a, fat, I'm a fat ass though. So but no, nah, hey, I gotta eat. Hey, bro, good for you, dude. I'm here, like I gotta. It's not not like I'm way too intense for my own good sometimes too. I'm like I gotta keep going. Like I watch too much pro wrestling, bro. I'm like <laughs> I am the fucking warrior. Literally, bro, dude. Like I don't know who I think I am sometimes. Like. I, I definitely have personas that just take over at times. I'm just like, okay, so he's doing it. Cool. Okay, you go, girl. You're like, I'll watch. It's scary, but yes, I, I actually I feel that heavy. I feel honestly like when when I when I go to work, 
or like when I when yeah. I hit the club or when I go out to like a restaurant, I feel like I have a a different personality for each one. If that makes any sense. No, absolutely. You know I, I mean? No, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. And like I, And I feel like they do clash sometimes. Absolutely, dude. Because like it's crazy. Because like, all right, like I view it as I mean, and we all have it in our own way. Because like people we have it look, like everybody has it. You know, there's work you, there's school you, for example, just say, you know, you're going to school. There, you know, there's family you. Great. But now let's take it, like, to the nitty-gritty aspects of things. Like, the things you like, the things you like to do. For example, like, the other night, uh, so I went rogue as fuck at my job. Okay. Because, well, I was telling you about it before the show. I went rogue as fuck at my job because we were getting that biz pop. Yeah. You know the biz pop. You know the biz pop. So, we just, I, I fucking kept it open an hour later. Bro, we, but mind you, I know all these people too, so we're all friends. And then I, I recently finally got like consistent bartending shifts. I was with my buddy that this was like, he just started bartending as well. So we're like, you know, the rookies, bro. We're here just, what do you guys want? Like, we're fucking kidding. Bro, I'm here fucking doing the whole, like, it started off just, okay, cool, we're killing it. Then they were just, they were just feeding into it because they saw the energy because we were having the time of our lives. Yeah, you're working mind with your you, boy. We're like 11 hours in, by the way. Uh, so, <laughs> But we've just been killing it all day because we had so much to prove. Because like, they didn't even want us back there. Because, you know, feel that. We're, we're some wild, like, mostly me because I'm a fucking psycho sometimes. Like, I'm a wild motherfucker at times. Like, sometimes I'm the most passive person, which blows my mind. And sometimes it's like, I got to destroy anyone in my way. I'm like, bro, you're waiting tables. Yeah, but, you're going to be okay. But, but I had to tell you, though, like, when I was talking to you outside, it's like, it, it's true. You, you have, like, that energy where, like, your presence is felt in the room before you actually make, like, your Thank name you. known. Thank like, you. people know you're there without, like, you have to They sense it almost. It. It's, yeah. it's weird. And it's weird. <laughs> Dan, I, Dan, I feel like you have, like, a, that, that similar energy, but, like, I feel like you control it well. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe, like, I feel like with me, like, it radiates, but, like, sometimes I got to be like, yo... Like, you're radiating too hard, or sometimes I'm like, yo, you got to radiate a little bit more. Not to force it, but just let myself be that, you know? And I feel like you seem to, like, have a really good grasp on that concept, which, which is impressive to me because most people can't even grasp the concept of it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. Thank Absolutely. So, 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 so imagine I'm here going fucking, I'm feeding into it. And at this point, they're like, rookies, rookies. I'm here thinking I'm Hulk Hogan doing the fucking... <laughs> and then like I'm such a cocky prick that I'm there pointing at the camera on top of the bar like you like that you'll just see this are you not entertained mind you I'm supposed to be closed a fucking hour ago I, I should get fired for this shit but here we are they need they need the sales too man isn't that crazy they need the sales too like I think that's the one good thing about this point in time I don't think that the workers have ever had so much leverage before because they know that like oh no like this new generation is, is like sort of like not what I like what I what I've been doing, but it's it's like if they're not happy somewhere, they they're not gonna all the, got stick. They're it not out committed. Or, they're not no, committed. Like, oh yeah, right, I'm out. But like Wait. not committed, like not to their work, but like just to corporations, which is something I've recently got into. committed to themselves. Exactly. See to themselves, but see, I like to be committed to myself, but not just that. I like to be committed to the people I work for with. I like, and like see like for example like a uh shit. Whatever. I'll bleep it out. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, see, like, see, like, I have a manager that, like, this is my fucking dude. Like, like, like I said, I came back to work for him. Yeah. And then I'm at work, and then people are like, remember, you work for Fridays. Like, dude, I don't work for Fridays. I work for that fucking guy. Like, this is going to sound like a rap song. I don't work beep. I, nah, yeah, when I was at that. Oh. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't work for this fucking corporation. There it is. We'll cut that out. I don't work for this corporation. I work for that fucking guy because he inspires me to work harder. Yeah. You know, and then. I feel that. Like, no, like, I'm very big on that. I'm very, because, like, no one does anything alone. And if people want to stop you, even if they don't even know you, just because they want to give the opportunity to someone else who is willing to work with others, they will stop you. And that's yeah. the thing, like, we have control over ourselves, but we don't have control over what happens to us. You know what I'm saying? Now, we could avoid certain circumstances, obviously. But if people want to get in your way, they're, they're going to get in your way. It's that simple. You can't control that, you know? So it's so interesting to see now that we have more leverage that maybe, maybe we can't stop everybody in our way, but we could definitely, you know, try. Yeah. Which is nice, which is nice. Like, I have to do that. They didn't want me behind that bar. 
And then I was like, if you don't put me there, I'm walking the fuck out. <laughs> it's not a, like, what are we doing? I feel like now you guys are a lot more, uh, you guys have, you guys are a lot less expendable as compared to before. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially in the restaurants. That's something that they would tell you. It's like, oh yeah, if you don't want to go, yo, we have people applying here every day. And it's like, all right, well, yeah. where are they now? They're just employed for, for whatever. Where are they now? Where are they now? They're at home, beating their fucking meat, getting an unemployment check. No, and I'm seeing these restaurants that they'll be like, yo, $1,000 sign-on bonus, $1,500 sign-on bonus, but you have to last 90 days, yeah. which means that like, they're not staying. Like, oh, bro, the turnover rate right, right now? Dude. It's ridiculous. Dude, I see people within the same week. <laughs> within the same week. Dude, I don't learn anybody's name until you stay a month. You, you think I'm kidding? And I tell, no, see, because it goes back to my little intensity. And I tell them, too. I'll be like, hey. Feeds the ego. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Great. I'm probably going to forget it multiple times. If you're here a month, I promise I'll make an effort to remember it. Like, don't take it the wrong way. Don't take it the wrong way, but, like, you have to understand, I don't expect anybody to stay at this one. And I don't blame anybody. I'm, oh, bro, right I don't. Now, res- it, it, dude, it bro, hurts to work in the biz right dude, now. Bro, at that, dude, at this point, we're correlating what days we're, we're like, we each call out. Okay, so what's up? You got Saturday? Okay, so you're going to call out Saturday? Okay, cool. That's fine. I'll call out Monday then. So that way you get your Saturday. You balance That's it fair. Out. But like at this point, like I expect at least one person to call out every shift. Because it's wow. fucking hard, bro. It's fucking hard, dude. It's fucking hard. It's fucking exhausting. And people piss you the fuck off. Right, so like, and I get it, and I, I genuinely do get it when people are like, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Like, I, I, I promise you, I genuinely get it. But, but when you're ordering some like a food, especially like if you're ordering like a like a chicken alfredo or something, right. and then you know, you know it has cheese, or you know it has a certain Dairy, ingredient that whatever. you can't yeah. have. Oh, can can we do this? Like, but do you have this without? And it's like, the menu's right in front of you. What like, it, like, and then it's just, oh, can I have the the can I, or can I get this drink? But can you make it without these ingredients or like a oh, skinny martini? But can I get this and that? It's like, what are you saying? Like, w- like, just tell me what you want. Then, what, what, like, what? like, just to- like, don't ask me what. Like, just tell me what you want. What are you? What can you have? <laughs> like, like, holy shit! Like, Do you need a gluten sensitive menu? Yeah, <laughs> like, just, like, work with me here. Like, don't, don't ask. Like, what can you have? No, my favorite is when they pull up with specials from other places. <laughs> I get, I, I get. See, I don't work, I don't work for Chili's. So, I, and actually, I'm, I'm gonna hype them up. So. Shout out to Chili's. Shout out to Chili's. Sponsor us. I don't want to fucking work for you, but sponsor us. Excuse me. That, that's how I feel about working for Chili's. That's gross. There yeah. goes that sponsor. <laughs> working for Chili's is gross. But, hey, I like your food, though. Um, but, anyways. Eh, man. Whatever. Um, I like your specials. So, I, I, what, what do I get all the time? Do you, have this, do you still have the two-for-ones? Is it on the menu? Bro. I started, well, the first time I ever started working on my work, and I was six years ago. I've never sold a fucking two-for-one in my life, bro. The fuck are we talking about here? Do you have fajitas? I don't even have a fucking tortilla in the whole kitchen, bro. Where the fuck do you see tortillas? Well, yeah. And I got to be there, and I was like, oh, no. No, thank God for the mask, because, like, my eyes just stay this. No. I roll my eyes pretty often, but whatever. I'm just, but, I was so happy to have a mask. But like, I, I utter you fucking idiot under my breath at least a hundred times a day. And then that's what I'm trying to be nice. It's sometimes bad. like, dude, like sometimes, bro, sometimes I'm just so defeated or just over it. I'll be like, fuck this guy. Like as I'm walking away and I've, and I've heard, then I've, and I've heard people be like, what? I'll be like, I'll be back. <laughs> Give me one second. And then I just go to the bathroom and like, I'll fucking almost tear down the wall or something. <laughs> yeah, or no my other favorite one is when like they love to the that we've been waiting for 35 minutes for my food and then you actually you go check because you have you know you it sends the time and it's, it's been about like 10 minutes the minutes. fuck you have, have a, oh dude I, oh see i'm a sicko why don't i do i go to the back and i take a picture for them <laughs> like look no you haven't no you haven't this is your order right am i correct or did i get that wrong too just like just like a perception of time yeah, or, or like the other one is like, why did uh, I ordered before the, those guests? Why did their food come out before mine? And it's like, dude, you ordered a ribeye. Well done. They had a house salad. What the fuck are we talking what about? What are you like? Are you serious right now? Bro, it's so like, 
the service industry, like in the moment, if everything is so life or death, but then you sit back and you're like, I have trauma over because I forgot to set a ranch now. Dude, like, and then like. I've woken up in the middle of the night. Fuck, I forgot the ranch. Fucking table 34 forgot the blue cheese. God damn it. And then it's, no, not only that, it's like also a a, a mantra that, you know, it's been, that it's been like instilled in restaurants, which honestly, thank God, it doesn't happen at the club. Like it's instilled in the restaurant is, hey, the customer's always right. The guest is, the customer is never right. I'm sorry. The customer sometimes doesn't even know what the fuck they want. Bro, the customer sometimes pulls up the wrong menu. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was another restaurant. So the customer doesn't know where the fuck they're standing right now. You know what? I'll take off my glasses for this for for the next 30 seconds, too, because we're dead fucking serious about this. Like the customer is. No, look look into the camera. I'll look into the camera, too. The customer is not always right. Some most of the times you don't even know where you're sitting. You don't know what you want. You don't know what restaurant. How are you right if you don't know what you want? Sorry, I I I feel like that's been burning in my chest for like years. Like the customer, the customer is not always right. No, it's not such a reasoning. We're dropping facts. You're you're a fucking moron. Make make sure that you have the Sorry. right menu. No, I'll say, it. bro. The other day I had some guy. Oh, can I can I order this and that? I was like, bro, what are you talking about? I don't have any of that. Oh, I have the menu from Cheesecake. I'm like, you fucking jackass. <sighs> Or, like, they come into a full restaurant and then they want to start making modifications on their food. Like, you already know that your food is going to take a little longer than normal, but now you just want to make the kitchen's life a little harder. Oh, bro, don't get me started on that. Dude, sometimes we have to start a wait and the restaurant looks empty. But what people don't understand is I have one person in the back running five stations. Yeah, oh, I could sit right there. It's like, you could sit right there. But you're going to wait 45 minutes for your fucking no food. No one's going to go greet you. Though. No one's going to go talk to you, bro. Like, no one's going to feed you. You're going to wait 45 minutes for your food, and you're going to be pissed off. So, you know what? I'd rather have you wait outside. Go for a walk. We'll fucking call you. Our oh, people man. will call your people. Don't worry about it. But no. But no, I want to sit there. It's empty. What the fuck? Okay, bro. Oh, dude. Like, self-seaters? I, no, like, I need a drink. <laughs> like, that, there I need it a drink. drink. <laughs> self-seaters? Oh, bro. Self-seaters are my favorite. Like, I'll be like, hey. What, self-seaters no self-seaters that sit themselves on tables that are still dirty bro let me tell you a story let me and tell then you, complain about it bro let me tell you a story dog i have a buddy of mine the other day this guy just hit it he hit the fan <laughs> hit it because they because uh where he works at it's off self-seating but they set up these dirty ass tables and plates so the, so that he had this really rude family that was like you need to wipe this down for us mind you this guy's weeded and there's plates he's like yeah okay when what he does he gets a fucking rag and he's just Throws it all on this motherfucker. This guy. Oh, shit. Oh, he, like all the juices and whatever. Fwah, fucking tidal wave of gunk at this fucking guy. You want? Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck your kids. Fuck your family day at that <laughs> point. Fuck your kids. <laughs> oh, dude, I don't give a shit about people's kids. I don't, bro. I mean, like, kids are cute and I hope they grow up great and all that. Sure. But when people are like, but my kid is hungry. You know, you, you know who the fuck else is hungry? The other 197. No, me. Here. Fuck that. No, me. Oh. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> I've been here running food all day and I'm like, can I have, you know what? I'll fucking do it so the camera sees how I really feel. Can I have a fry, master? Bail me, some food. Me talking to my managers. Please, me tum tum is empty. And they're like, do more. Oh no, why not just tell me, stop it. <laughs> and I'm just here like, yes, master, please. I need me, I need me coins to pay me bills. So starve me. So fucking starve me. Yeah. Fuck it. And I'll go suck some cock. I guess I'll be the only meat in my mouth today, right? Incredible. <laughs> Incredible, bro. The fucking hospitality biz. <sighs> But I love it. For some reason, I can't leave it. Oh, no, bro. Bro, for be, some reason, I can't. Because leave the money is fucking great, dude. Come on, I, you're, you're not gonna catch me sitting, in the, bro. Like I remember when the IKEA first opened, when the IKEA by the mall oh, first opened. Oh my god, dude. Bro, these motherfuckers, bro. I'm never. I laugh. I think about this at least twice a day. These motherfuckers came. I'm never gonna forget it. I'm like, this is when he just started serving because I was a busser for a, a stupid amount of time at that point because I was the only guy busser host for like four months, and like this is like in 2016. So you know. Like equality for all women and the workplace wasn't too big. So you have to throw out the trash because you're a guy. Now it's like, yo, make her send it to the night. Fuck it. We get paid the same. So <laughs> this is what you wanted, right? Shit. Oh, dude, like 
Dude, like, I tell my significant others all the time, like, yo, go get soul. Carry me around, actually. You know what? I want to get carried. Fuck it. Carry me. Carry me like a little sack, you know? Just mm-hmm. put me on your back. Walk me around. I don't. Carry me like a fucking bride. I don't care. Just, I, I'll let you feel superior. I don't care at all. Fuck it. Equality, right? Hasta la vista, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you can't carry me, bye. <laughs> that I, is. You but uh, hit the, uh, like I said, I'm a fat boy, so you got to hit the gym. Then. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Hey, dude, I got a little... Uh, I'm, t- I'm not easy to pick up, bro. Hey, <laughs> like, bro. I'm not easy. I got a little, t- I got a little tum-tum, too, and it ain't easy being sleazy either, you know? But, uh, no, it's a, it's a whole fucking mess, and uh, I hate everybody. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, so, I have a few questions for you before we move on to the ATI, okay? You know, just talk to me. First, what's the weirdest shit you've seen in the club since, since, since it... Reopen that like has stuck with you. Weird shit that I seen at the club. I saw as soon as I walked in, I saw some dude like having a seizure on the floor. Like how bad? Like little twitch or like did no, he no, look like, like he a magic like, card? He was like on the side, like he was shaking and shit. Like they had a bucket next to him with the lights, and I saw it and I just looked at it and I'm like, walk the other way. I, if I saw that, that's gonna like that's gonna fuck with. That, that's the most Miami thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, I'm like, oh, they're already on him. They got everything good. He's good. I'm just walking the fuck away. But, yeah. And, and I mean, to a certain point, I understand you. You're getting out of a post-pandemic. It's your first night out, maybe. You're, you can't let this shit control you like that, though. Like, if you're going to go out and do your drugs or whatever, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not one to judge. Do you have nah, fun? No, nah, but- I'll judge you. No, I won't. But just take care of your life, nah. though. Okay, no. See, no, but if you let yourself get to that point, I'll judge you. I'm sorry. No, hey, dude. Hey, bro. I'm all for it. Come on. I'm all for it, bro. We like green things. It snows in Florida, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. (laughs) Great. I'm here for it. Sorry, mom. So, oh, fuck. Fuck. I don't fucking care. I don't want to, bro. Bro, man, I don't fucking care at all. If you knew how fucking over I am over society boundaries about shit, man, I don't have, bro, I have zero fucking chill for anybody at this point. Oh, what? You got a fucking problem with the way I, with the way I live? Then don't fucking look at me. It's that easy. Get the fuck out of my way. It's that easy. It's that simple. I lie. Well, no, that was the, the trippiest shit, but I think the weirdest thing that I've seen so far right now like at least at the club was this last weekend right now what happened since we instilled the well since they instilled the the no smoking cigarettes at the club what happened? everyone you know you just you're not saying that you can't smoke in the club you just bring your pens bring your vape pens bring your nicotine pens just no, no more of that nasty ass cigarettes bro there's there's like very nice plant life in the club now i i, I get it and you know it's just also better for you better for the environment for in sure. itself why not sure so I was I was downstairs. I was waiting on my friend. That was he was he was coming. He was bringing me some coffee. And so as I'm downstairs, again, since I, I never see this because you're allowed to smoke, I I counted it. It was about eight different people in a matter of twenty minutes. Because you know at the club you don't you're not allowed reentry once you go in. Of course. In. But they're there and they're like just like feigning. No, I'm talking with the bouncers. Like, look, man, I'm not leaving. I just I need to smoke a cigarette, please. Like, let me just stand outside real quick to smoke a cigarette. And it's like, it really, like, like that had, like, the addictive nature. Like, it got to that point where, like, you, you know, you, you just spent maybe a hundred and something dollars just to walk into this place. It could be someone that you've been waiting for. Maybe you're just trying to get lit or whatever. You're with your people. You're with your group. You have to leave them to walk out of the club because you, you need to get your cigarette fixed. Yeah. But now, Yo. let me throw something at you real quick. I agree with what you're saying, but let's take it farther. Not, not only the addictive nature, because fuck it. I'm a cigarette smoker, but, like, I'm the type of person, like, I'll buy a pack, and, like, it'll last me a week. Okay, no, see, I, cigarette has never, it's not, no, my, hey, not my cup of tea, hey. but I'm the same way with weed, though. Oh, no, see, weed, like, I like, smoke, I, I smoke I like need, a fucking chimney. Dude, I wake up, first thing I'm reaching for is my bong. Like, like I, I, so that's why, like, I talk about addictive nature. I hate on, and I openly hate on cigarettes. Yeah. But I'm a stoner all the way oh, through. Oh, no, like, I'm, I'm a heavy, I'm, I'm going to smoke a cigarette smoker. right after this. <laughs> exactly. And I'm a heavy smoker. But that's why, like, I genuinely love how, like, you walk in, like, I'm smelling some greens right now. I'm not smelling, like, that nasty nicotine I'm right now. But that, I and could agree again, with you. if you want to do your nicotine, do your nicotine. Just bring your pen. Just bring your vape pen. Bring your nicotine. It's not saying, hey, no smoking allowed, period. Just 
don't bring that shit. <laughs> like, I could agree with you on that. Like, so I, as a cigarette smoker, it, it smells terrible, dude. But now, with that said, let me go back to my theory. Not only are they addicted to, to like the cigarette, the pattern that they're used to getting fucked up in. That's, boom! I did my drink. Boom! I did my bump. Dude, I did this. I did that. Now, right, now I need, I I need, need my, my cigarette. cigarette. You got me. So now you mentally are like. Because, like, it's happened to me before. But, like, just fuck it. I refuse to be a fucking fiend, frankly speaking. Because at that point, bro, if I, look, I don't even care if I got in for free. If I waited a fucking line to get in here, I'm not going outside. And you know that you're risking a no re-entry. No, risking. You're nearly guaranteeing it at a place like space. You're nearly guaranteeing. But the programming that we put ourselves through... Even just like, we're using this as an example, but it happens to everybody even on their morning routines. You know, you wake up, you, you know, you go have your little fucking coffee in the morning, you gotta read your newspaper, whatever, and then you go get ready for work and you move on with your fucking day. Imagine taking the coffee out of that. You're fucked. Your whole day is you're fucking fucked. fucked. Your whole day is, even if you get your coffee later, you're, you're, you're already lagging to the point that when you got your coffee, you're already behind of where you normally would be. If that makes sense. It does. No, because you needed it at that point. So since you didn't, you're already sluggish getting to that point. So now you're playing catch up with your day. So 100%. So, so now you're watching a whole socio, sociological thing go down by watching these guys negotiate for that cigarette. For the cigarette. For that cigarette time, for those five minutes. But, 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 now, we're, but now we're putting all the stakes on the table. You left your people behind. Paid your money to get in here. You wait in a line. You're going. You're probably gonna have to pay again, or at least you're gonna have to pay the bouncer to let you back in. But but then you might have to wait in line. That's not guaranteed either. And you're willing to sacrifice all of that to stay with your programming. Because you need that. You need your fix. Because you need your fix that you convince yourself you need. Your fix. Because like like I said, I'm a heavy smoker, very heavy smoker. But there's times where like I'll forget my pen at the house or something, and I could go the sh I could go the whole night while smoking. I can go the whole night without drinking. Yeah. So I'm here, like you know, it's not maybe it's not my, like you said, not part of my pattern like that. Yeah. But you're, you're, just, you're, just watching these people, just like and like like literally fiending, almost like begging, like yo, I just need to walk out real quick. I just need to smoke a quick cigarette and I'll be right back, please. And it's like, like it really is oh, that addictive, bro. It really is. It really is. Wow. It, absolutely. But like, like I said, we're talking about cigarettes, but I think it's with all things. But but in this is, but you're definitely not wrong. I definitely yeah, I, no, yeah. all things like once once you're scheduled like once you're programmed on doing something yeah bro like we could say the same thing about phones dude like I'm I'm not gonna leave in front bro I'm I'm addicted to my phone dude easy dude like before this I easy. didn't have social media for like two years like very like on and off you know like I'll cancel my shit for like a month um, for like a few months I'll go on for like a week and then I have to, I have to download the, I have to delete the apps because wow. I'm like yo I'm gonna take a break I'm gonna take a break and then I'm on it again oh so no see like I've, I've deleted Facebook I don't know how many wow. times I've deleted Instagram I don't know how many times I've deleted Snapchat I don't know how many times and I always have to come back to it no, so see. it's it's addictive no, see, like, I got to the point where like I didn't have to get rid of the apps like had this shit down like i would literally look at the apps and just be like i don't need it and then of oh, course no. i started you know we we started this little pro this little fun little project we got going on here no it's not such a reason it's not a fun little project it's a serious business we need all your sponsorships we need all your support and love so <laughs> so to go back to that um yeah no now i'm fucked <laughs> i'm so fucked like but the first half hour of my day I don't give a shit if I'm running late, bro. I'm like, what's happening in the world? Let me, cause bro, we have I, like, and it's not even that I'm there like scrolling through Instagram per se, just there's so much information happening at all times. And the, and you have, you have access to all updates about everything at a moment's Instantaneously, notice. Instantaneously, bro. bro. And it's like, literally what I think is what went down when I'm sleeping. Shit, I called him this morning. I was like, I told him like three different basketball deals that went down. Oh, shit. Just like, and it's just like, it's stupid, but I get to know all of it now. Because you have it at your hands, you have it in your pocket. Imagine 20 years ago, your, your favorite player could have gotten traded. You wouldn't know till at least the earliest oh. the next day on the newspaper. But average, probably a few days. Maybe. Maybe. Honestly. Maybe. So like my, my thing with it though, is like, I, I always want to say like, it, it, social media is very toxic because you know, you're... You really you you're trying to flex one life that you're really not living. Well, or you're posting or not even flexing, well, but you're well, posting the highlights. Maybe. Well, hold on though. Let me stop it. It can be really toxic. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't. But it doesn't have to. Be, again, but it can be. Especially like how we said. In Miami though, it's 
it's used for that for what you're saying feeding your ego like no I, I feed it. that's no that's huge. what it is it's flexing you're showing people what you're doing who you are look at me i mean you're marketing yourself which which you do on a day-to-day -day base but now you are you're false marketing yourself and i don't mean playing a persona at this point you're creating a whole fucking character that isn't just like a persona like i'm talking to you and this is who i am or like with bartending i'm you have, you have five different clients you're a, you're a different person to each one but here you're creating a whole different life yeah like it's a whole life like there's time committed and it and it extends as long as you want it to be and it's as real as you want it to be even though it's not real at all which is just fucked it's crazy it's crazy it really is crazy and then right now like um I'm trying to become like a a, a a social media presence, like at least like in the nightlife industry. Of course. So like I'm, I'm trying to follow up with it. Like even right now, like when we took like the quick little break, like a little smoke break, yeah. like I was on my phone already, like already promoting like the next events. Yeah. And it's like it, you have to though. It you becomes have to. like a nature. Yeah. And but it's it's like like you said it, you're programmed on it. So now I'm at the point where like I'll I'll be chilling normally, and mind you, like I, I don't even like fully work for the club, but the park in itself. And I'll just be chilling normally, having a conversation or something, and it's just like a click in the back of my head. Yo, there's events this week. I haven't posted yet. What am I doing? Doing. And then, like, do you like do you have a certain pattern of posting that you try to put see like for us? I have a like I have a curated pattern that I like to post in, like a, like schedule them and everything. Is that something that I like I post to I you? I don't schedule them. But I do have, like, certain days I do got to post, like, what's coming up that week. Okay. And then days where, like, I usually might not or, like, I'm just eating shit on social media, I'll be like, oh, yo, there's events that are happening in, like, three, four months. Let me, boom, quick reminder. Like, so it's just trying to make myself known, like, on, on like, yeah, no, like that I, And, like, you have to, learn, like, networking, too. Like, like we, yeah, like, it's, we're. It's who you know, not what you do. Know. Exactly. We, we, I feel like that, that, that's been, like, the theme of the day here. And, uh, and the same thing here, dude. Like, we're always thinking about, like, Okay, like, how can we market ourselves better? And, like, we, there's so much room for improvement that it's almost like, where do I even start? It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like crazy. It's, it's, there's, and it's that social media just gives you so many different... It's like, like uh, have you seen the show Loki? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's like... The you Nexus ha bro, timeline? It's like social media gives you the chance of having just all these different variants of yourself, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's like you have all these different variants, and then, like, one day you could wake up, we're like, dude, on weekends... I'm a different variant of myself. I'm not on dress. I'm, I'm Pipe. Yeah. Pipe, absolutely. and I'm just, I'm there. I'm, I'm trying to be the, the life of the party. I'm trying to be like, yo, you're trying to go somewhere. Like, you're hitting me up. Like, of course. It's, it's like I turn into, like, a completely different person. Come the next day, dude, if I, my fucking hobby, bowling. I love bowling. Really? Yeah, so when I go bowling, I'm a completely different person. And I don't share, like, while the club, I'm like, yo, I'm hitting everyone up, let's do this. Bowling is something so sacred to me. Like, I, I take, like... You don't even want, look, like, like, you don't even want to go bowling with these people. No, no, no. You like, don't? One, no. Of, well, one, one of my boys. Like, I well, don't okay, like going bowling okay, by myself. Okay, okay, my no, but Johnny, like, I love you, Johnny. He but, loves you, Johnny. But, like, what I mean is, like, you don't want to bring people who aren't going to respect what's sacred to you into your sacred activities. Yes. Cause honestly, when you're bowling, dude, like it's like at that point, it's just you're focused on one thing, and then like you you zone everything out. So like I I disconnect entirely from it. You get me? I'm, I disconnect everything from everyone. Like, yeah, no, just, and like you're just there in the moment. So it, it's it's like sacred time for me. Yeah. And like I, it's just something I'm I don't want to be like oh yeah dude I'm going bowling and I'm gonna hit like oh or like oh hey what are you doing oh I'm bowling oh can I meet you but like not no, really no, no like, not, I'm yeah. sorry like <laughs> yeah no and I bet that in your position right now you know. Obviously, you know, you're not where you want to be as a promoter and stuff like that, but like you- Not at all. I'm not even like an actual promoter yet. You get me? Well, look like, at that. But like, but, but I'm sure that even then there's some, some, some fucking people trying to get something from you. Yes. Because there always is. Yes. Somebody somewhere is trying to get something from somebody. So I'm sure- But that means I'm going in the right way. Oh, absolutely. Trust me. We have, uh, John and I, by the way, big thank you to Jonathan from Cocho and Coladas for coming in, producing today. Fucking killing it. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. So, so, um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Oh, so that poo, -poo, 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 -poo was amazing. Like, it, oh, yeah? Yeah. So we were just talking Thank about you. it the other day about how, like, you know, like, we both started off our podcast in very humble ways. Uh, Jay, my co-host, and I, we started off in his bedroom. John started off in the office in, in his house. And now that, you know, they've seen, like, both of our podcasts, obviously, be upgraded. And we're nowhere near where we want to be at all. But upgrades have been made. And, you know, it's noticeable. 
I, I, yes, I think no, that's all. I, I, I want to congratulate you guys. Honestly, oh, this is thank you. fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. It's 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 taking a lot of effort, and we're very proud of, of it. And you know, we recognize that as well. Nobody's you know, we're not having a jerk circle about it, but <laughs> but we do recognize the progress as you have to with most things. And then people just come out, yo, whoa, you got a studio? Let me slide, dog. Let me slide. Let me slide. And like when we first got this, that was a really big problem. Because people are like, we're just because we're trying to figure out what it is that like at that point we we're even trying to figure out the identity we wanted for this studio, which even at times we still have to adjust that. But at that point we just got it. We figured it out. Everybody just fucking yo dog. Let's try the stool. Can I slide through the stool? Can I slide through? The, until I got to a point where I was like, no, fuck you. You can't. Like, it, or like when they would come, like if like I would set boundaries, you know. And if the boundaries are falling, like I kick people the fuck out. Dude, yeah like exactly. bro like do like we've been recording there's people that like literally like have answered their phones in the middle of a podcast something we're like what the fuck are you doing you know nah, nah. and even if it's people that we know imagine like imagine if i had a stranger here i'm here doing this podcast with you and they answer the phone how do you feel i would be like what the fuck are we doing here? yeah absolutely i feel like I, out of place a little bit no not even out of place and just uh almost borderline disrespectful yeah if not borderline you know so 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 but now being a promoter where people are always trying to be at the club and shit or even starting but, your journey there whatever but it's the same thing though people yeah. are at, who i haven't talked to in years i'm talking about years like I, and it'll be at three in the morning and like bro hey, get me in get me in i'm just like i it's one it's not that easy just hey get me in and boof oh i got and, you and who do you think you are and then two is like what and he's like wow bro da, 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 this and that i thought we were friends and i'm just like First of all, like, who is this? <laughs> like, what are you, what are you saying? Yeah. And then two, it's not like, oh, snap my fingers and boom, congrats, hey, you're in. Like, no, like, I'm, I'm, I'm no, I'm nobody there. That's still, not bro. beeping like, nightclub, like. Yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. Like, I'm, I'm nobody there yeah. still, bro. Like, no, I don't know, like, like no. <laughs> absolutely no. I get it. I, I, I let it. Like, whenever I have the chance, where like I, I have access to like guest lists where I can bring people in, like I let it be known, and I'm like, yo, now get you in. But you just can't hit me up at three thirty in the morning just because you're lit. Like, oh hey, let's go, boom. Now it's like, it's like I don't even know you like that first, bro. Like, yeah, bro, it's crazy. And talking about knowing people, thank you for letting me get to know you better today, bro. Thank you for having me, man. Oh, absolutely, dude. It's been a pleasure. It's so far, it's been a pleasure. But we got one more thing for you. ATIs. ATIs, not a UTI. I say this joke every time and I'm never going to stop. Uh, with that said, let's take a minute because I got to pee like a fucking racehorse. Do your thing, Bubba. And honestly, all that cigarette talk, I'm going to go be that guy <laughs> and I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. All right, so it's time for UTI. I mean ATI. Don't get a UTI, guys. That's weird. Um, and yes, I did use it twice in one episode. I don't care. So this is how it goes. You can't look at the cards. This is asked by the internet. So, I'll let you go first, buddy. All right, so... Get, get, the, get the top card. Read it out loud. All right, top card. Top card. If you could live inside of one TV show, what would you live in? Hmm. I don't know, bro, because, like, most TV shows... Think about it. Most TV shows need to keep going. So, there's, like, a bunch of drama going on in every show ever. You know what? You want to know where I would live? Sesame Street. Okay. Everybody's nice there. Everybody's chilling. It's a Sesame Street. But what happens after the cameras? What are those Muppets getting into? I'll do a line with Big Bird. Big line, Big Bird. Big line, Big Bird. Car! You know? Okay. Yeah. Sesame Street. But, hmm. but when the camera's rolling, we're in a nice neighborhood. It's kind of like daytime and nighttime, you know? Okay. Hmm, that's, uh, this is, this is a hard one. I, I would probably... I'd probably live in, like, the Family Guy world. Why? Just feel like I could get away with anything there. Yeah? Do you feel like you relate to? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Bring it back, bring it back to you? No, no just because you're, you're hunching over. I want you to look good. Oh, hold on, guys. Yeah, Very good. So, so, pick right. up, so start again with Family Guy. I'd probably pick the Family Guy world, though. The Family Guy, I feel like I could get away with everything there. And just watching, like, the type of shit that goes well, on like, in that would, show. Would you want to be like Peter fighting the giant chicken? No, but I would love to just be walking down the street 
And then like when I look to the left, I just see a fucking giant chicken fighting a fat dude. Oh, so you just want to be an extra living in Koha. Yeah, I just want to live in your world. own business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't wow. have inside of that TV show though. Oh no, see, I'm here like, I want to corrupt Sesame Street. Ah! Yeah, man, you know, hey, some people like to take bumps with like Big Bird. Hey bro, yeah. HBO owns Sesame Street now, so I don't know what to tell you. You don't? Damn. These guys made The Wire and The Sopranos. You don't think that there's some fuckery going on? Could be. Good. I, see, I can see like Elmo, like, you know, head of a mafia family. Oh, bro, Elmo, dude. The Super it. Gonzo with these alter egos. Bro, that guy has a multiple personality disorder. That's what's going on with Super Gonzo. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. You ready? All right. What you got? What do I got? Show me what you got. Would you rather fight Mike Tyson or sound like him for the rest of your life? I'll talk like this. I'm not fighting Iron Mike. How long of a fight? How long do you think it'll take for you to get knocked the fuck out? And how much brain damage do you think you'll get from getting knocked the fuck out by Mike Tyson? Three solid seconds. Bro, I don't know if I'll get, I, I'll get I, I don't. I don't even think that's that, that much. Like, Maybe like a two seconds, then like hit. It, I'll be out for like a couple days. All right, John, I'm going to put this pressure on you. Is this modern Mike or Iron Mike, like 90s Mike? Uh, this is modern Mike. So Mike as he is right now. I mean, he'll still knock me the fuck out, but I don't think I'll die. So you know what? Yeah, let's fight. All right, but now, is his lisp modern Mike or 90s Mike? No, I, Dan, that's a good question. I, I would just keep Dan, it, that is a good question. I would keep it as modern, but it, it's still pretty bad. <laughs> like you said, three solid seconds, and I just heard three solid seconds. Three solid seconds. Three solid. I'm just trying to be the new champion in the world. I'm the meanest. I'm the baddest. I yeah. feel like if I had the Mike Tyson uh, list, I'd sound like Bobby Boucher. Yeah. From, like the water boy. Draw me your best Bobby Boucher. Mama always said the alligators are angry because they got all them teeth with no toothbrush. <laughs> Damn, that was good. Mama said I feel about the devil. The devil. No, Colonel Sanders, you're wrong. Mama right. Nah, you sound like Herbert from Family Guy. No, Herbert, Herbert sounds like, Hi, ah, kid. Yeah. Come here, Chris. You know you want some of this. What the fuck? Oh, that, was, that, that, was, that, was that was scary that, good, that, dog. That scary. Plot twist. He's from Family Guy, sure. not you. He's in the Family Guy. Heard, heard. Go ahead. Come here and get your fat ass over here, boy. I would probably, well, I, I would probably get, I'll take the three. It's one hit, bro. I'm going to be blacked out already. Like, <laughs> well, that, Excuse me. What about? I don't know. Like, like I'm, I'm expend. I'm expecting that. Like, you know, my health bills are gonna be covered and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, like fuck it, yeah, like. But at the same time, from the hit, I might, ha I might get my own lisp. You no, but you modern. Remember it. No, but modern Mike. I think like. It won't be as bad. I mean, it's gonna be bad. It's fucking Mike Tyson, but this isn't. I'm the baddest. I'm the baddest motherfucker in the world. Uh, praise, the, praise, praise to Allah. I'm what? gonna fuck you in the ass. <laughs> and you're gonna like it, but no, I, I, I don't think I could do the list for. I think I, I forever. Would, no, oh, bro, no, no, like no. I, like I know I have my own list already with like my Miami accent and shit. So you. like I, I have a speech impediment, so I'm like, yeah, I bro. stutter hard. No, dude, I actually took speech therapy for seven years. Oh shit, yeah, bro, yeah, dude, like, oh, dude, like I stutter, uh, and sometimes I, I, I have literally have to like maneuver. Like yes. around like certain uh, vowels or consonants. I have to drop. Sometimes I'll just stop talking entirely on like a, when when. Oh I, no! I yeah, like we're starting over. We're starting over. Yeah, it's just. It, it, it. Yeah, no. And just uh, oh, no. Oh, dude, like, when I was a little kid, bro, it was terrible. So yeah, I took speech therapy for seven years. Holy oh, shit! Yeah, I was actually just, I was actually supposed to keep going, but since I transferred schools, all that got lost in translation, which I think was healthier. Still starting at a, start, starting at a new school with street therapy, I don't think it's the best way to make friends. It's like a, it's like a little like morale boost as well, because you know you, you don't know. feel like in a way like different. You know, because you, know you know, and like I've owned it. I've made it into a thing. I have fun with it. You know, it is what yeah. it is. Exactly, bro. And like I, I had to go. It's not. To, I went through ESOL. There it is. You there it like is. I, I did ESOL for a little bit. There it is. But, all right. Would you rather be drunk 24-7 or never be drunk again? Never be drunk again. 24-7? Nah. Yeah, absolutely. You're never, never, be drunk you're, you're never gonna have a hangover? I I would never be drunk again. No, because like no, but like, all right, I'm I'm not we said drunk, not fucking trashed. 
but but be drunk at all times of the day and at night I, I look bro it's 24 hours a day drunk I'm bro good. the sleep is gonna be great because you're gonna pass you're out you're not gonna day. be asleep though you're gonna be drunk in your sleep but you're gonna pass out and then you're gonna wake up still drunk but i slept did you though no i didn't did you really i hear know? what you're saying i don't know i don't know i'm just feeding into all my vices today exactly and then like you said remember like uh when people that like they go through like their patterns and shit a lot of people if you're drinking you're gonna yeah the, you know what you're, you're, it's gonna snow in you, miami you know what i changed it and uh yeah and also i can't drive anywhere like you're stuck you're stuck being like drunk I, at home by yourself forever i wouldn't jesus I, what purgatory did we just create here yeah, huh? like dude that sounds like a, like another level of hell bro that bro, like we just took it like i went 30 seconds from wow how fun does that sound to oh my god i'm in purgatory and the thing is that it didn't say that like you'd be getting drunk it's just the, drunk. The, the fun part is getting drunk. Damn, so you're just there. When you're, already, the when you're already drunk, like that's already you're already plateaued. Forever. And you're just nah, I'm, no, you know I, I'm okay with never being. You know drunk what? Again, Thank you bro. for being like the like <laughs> the conscious person <laughs> here. I would yeah. never be yeah. As I have yeah. a beer in my hand. Incredible. Hey, I'll drink to that. Drink to that. If you had to get one movie quote tattooed on your body, what would it be? I am Iron Man, but like on top of my cock. Nice. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But funny though. I would. Mm-hmm. A movie line. All right, honestly. A movie line that I would get tatted. Honestly, because like I like to be uh, sarcastic like this. I would get. I have a bad feeling about this. By Han Solo, Star Wars. Well, every Star Wars movie. I got a bad feeling about this. I would get. I feel a disturbance in the force. I feel a disturbance in my fucking skin. I'm getting, I'm getting tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a disturbance. That's a disturbance. I know. I'm here. Like I got a bad feeling about this, and I had a bad feeling about the tattoo. Nice, nice, nice. Damn, that, that's actually a good one. You don't know the power of the dark side. Oh yeah, we we got sound bits. <laughs> okay. We fuck. <laughs> clearly, no, no. You know, clearly. you you know, fuck it. I'll give you another one. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Do you know what movie that's from? Joel. I love this soundbite. I love it. You know what? Let, let me just talk some disturbing shit real quick. I love this soundbite. So, you know, guys, you know, just to go back to the theme, don't work at a restaurant ever, guys, because they're gonna get you. The guests are gonna come. They're gonna get you. They're gonna, they're gonna make you cry. You're gonna be really sad. Oh my god, they're gonna come after you. Where the fuck is my ranch? Where's the ranch? You forgot the ranch. You gotta bring your food. The ranch is gonna get you! All right, change it. Terrifying. <laughs> and honestly, the music, the music adds that 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 extra. Oh no, God. it's terrible. Server nightmares. Bro. But yeah, server nightmares. But yeah, bro, I got a bad feeling about this. I like to be a little sarcastic prick, so that would be it. I think I would get the. I feel a disturbance in the force. Absolutely. What's your final card? If you had to make your sandwiches with the same two meats and one cheese for the rest of your life, what would you choose? Damn. You know what, though? They said meats. Let's get creative. It would be a pan con biste. Well, no, no, because you have to pick two meats. So one of the meats would be beef. Like beef. It would be beef steak. Be- yeah. Beef steak. Okay, okay, no, but like the actual palomilla. See, look, it just came out. Okay. Uh, no, but the, the actual the, the palomilla. Yeah. Swiss. Okay. And then you got one more meat. Let me go super out of there. Bacon. Okay. That, that's a pretty fire sandwich. I think that sounds like a pretty fucking fire sandwich. That's pretty nice. All right. Now, two meats and cheese. Honestly, cheese is no brainer for me. I'm taking Gouda cheese. Okay. Gouda is pretty Gouda. Gouda cheese, bro. When you toast that perfectly, like it just melts entirely. So I'm going to take some Gouda cheese. Meats, though. That's a hard one. I'm not going to lie to you. I'd probably take like. Damn. I would. I'd what pro- meat do you want in your mouth? Okay. <laughs> I'll probably take like some like chicken breast for sure. Okay. Nice. Take some chicken breast. Good call. Good call. And then I would take some. Just, just, you know, to switch it up, switch it up. I'd probably do like, like some, like some tuna steak. Okay, damn, but uh, forever? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. You know, that way I get a little bit of surf and turf, you know. So little, that guy said it, I forever want surf and turf in my mouth. Heard. Yeah, you know, a little bit of best both worlds. Me too. Worlds. 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 Of both. Now, I wonder if I got to add extra toppings. It didn't say anything well, about toppings. That's all it saying. didn't. It just said those. Are, those are, see, that's why it's just you're stuck with the same cheese and proteins, but you bro, can build it however bro. you want. I'm gonna have it my way. For every topping, you have to take off a finger. Damn. <laughs> I mean, look, <sighs> bro. I'll give bro, him my what last type hand. of saw-like sandwiches, dude. dude I'm like, I want to play a game. <laughs> are you hungry? Make me a sandwich with the best toppings. You either you either lose your fingers or you eat a dry sandwich. You have failed me for the last time. I'll give up my left hand. I, I was, you know, I'm such a fat bitch. I was counting how many fingers I'm willing to give up right, for like, this okay, fucking okay, sandwich, bro. Okay, okay, so look. All right, so look. In, this is the index finger, right? Or is this a ring finger? There's a ring finger, right? Mm -hmm. I'll give my ring finger. And I'll give up my index. I need to keep the middle and the pinky to at least hold something, you know? I could hold something like this all day. Could you hold something like this, guys? Let us, let us know in the comments, please. I would, I would give up my ring finger. Okay. Now, what are you adding? I'm adding mustard and lettuce. All right, so I got one. For one finger right now, I'd probably do a... Something that works for both of them together. I'd probably do like a like a ranch. Okay. So a surf and turf and ranch sandwich. I mean, remember, you, you, you can pick and choose how you play. No, it. each finger is No, it. no, but okay, true. For this, this yeah. Yeah, because ranch, you, mm, is that ranch on tuna? No, that sounds, that sounds, uh, I'm, well, I, I'll do a spicy mayo. A spicy mayo could work. A I'll spicy, do a spicy mayo. You know, a spicy mayo aioli. A little spicy mayo aioli. That, uh, spicy that mayo is a little too thick for me. Spicy mayo. I don't even like mayo, but you know what? Fuck it. I'll meet you at the yeah. spicy mayo aioli, I, I guess. I'll, I'll, I'll give up a finger for some spicy mayo aioli. Oh, no, I wouldn't. I'll laugh at you, but that's on you. It's your sandwich, not mine. I would probably give up my no, we're not touching. other ring finger. No, I'm not touching my right hand. I need maximum grip. Fair. I mean, I, I feel like I could get pretty grip with four and a half fingers. Nah, bro. You know, for my dumbbells, what else would it be for? Exactly. All I need is just three fingers, really. You There's know, I'm trying, trying to get up. Pump. Mm -hmm. uh, like I mean, realistically, I just need to make sure I still have my thumb and my middle finger. I want to make sure I can. Like, you know, what if I cut off my middle finger so that way I'm nicer to people? I don't know. Something to think Because then you're gonna, I'm gonna be flicking you off with my nub, oh. and you're just gonna get up. Damn, so I should top. I don't know. Something to think about. Last question. If I find a card, is that my card? Yeah, I think so. It's my card. Jesus Christ. All right. <sighs> If you could be a superstar athlete in any sport, but you couldn't have sex, would you do it? Damn. Fuck. Let, let's, make, let's make this a little bit more. Uh, Great job on that one, John. Thank you. Let's make this a little bit more of an experience. So if you had, if you had the, li the, the lime life of being in the, in the club and working your dream job, being the guy that everybody looks to, would you take that, but you couldn't have sex? You'd be, the, you'd be everything you wanted to be, the dream that you wanted to be in this profession. But you couldn't have sex. Can I masturbate? Yeah, yeah, of course. Can I have oral? No. It's sex at the end of the day. Is a hand job sex? Yes. N no. Yeah, that's sex. You can't have that. Either. Is that sex? You, though? Can, you can give your, I guess you can give yourself a hand job. But like, you could touch yourself, but you can't have other people touch you. Fuck Damn. it. Damn. You know oh, what? I mean, if I, no, if I can still touch myself. Yeah, I'm about it. Fuck that. Dude. To get, dude, to fulfill all my dreams and goals. I'll uh, give up the puss. Absolutely. Bro, look, hear me out. Sex is fire, man. Sex is great. Sex is great. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. One of what else is great is fulfilling my goals. And think about, no, but here's, no, let's go further. Think about how driven you're going to be. No one could stop you. All the energy and focus I would put into having sex or fucking, I'm putting it into the, you know? Bro, I mean, and I mean, I guess, yeah, I, I would take it, but that's dude. Like, I, think I shouldn't right, have. It shouldn't take I think me that right long now to think I, about it. I but, think, <laughs> I think right now, if I didn't have sex, all my goals would be fulfilled. Yeah, straight up, straight up. I think I'd probably be in, in, in a better mental state too, to be honest with you. Bro, getting laid is fun. It's, it, it's a great time. Um, but you know, uh, who needs a woman? All right, <laughs> all right. When I have a hand, nah, not twins. 
I mean, I know the question is is about sex, but the straightest thing you could do is have sex with a man, bro. I I, I think that's straight to the point. <laughs> straight to the point. Straight to the point. Absolutely. Straight so, to the point. So strong pass, but straight to the point. So what do we keep? So do we both agree? Yeah, I would. I would. If I had to stop fucking people, but I can still touch myself and I can fulfill like my like my dream goals, my career goals, and everything. I'm gonna take that. The hand to the bank. Then you know what? We'll close to it out bank. with that. Give me your hand. We'll shake on it. Thank you, Beaver, for coming on. Thank you for having me, bro. Bro, it's been a pleasure. This was honestly like really fun. No, like, absolutely, dude. This was it, very fun. It was a great time. Uh, do us a favor, John. Wait, Jonathan. Thank you also for coming on. You can't see him, but. He's the man behind the cameras. Thank He's you, right you. here. Uh, th thank you so much. And Bieber, give your shout outs. Uh, shout out to my moms. Love you. Shout First. out to my little dog, Loki. I miss him. And, and let the people know where they can find you on Twitter, on Instagram, all that. Yeah, bro. Pl I plug yourself <laughs> in, dude. Come on. Let them know. Come on. Promote yourself. Yo, yeah, man. This is all you. Uh, Instagram is at they call me Pipe. They call me Pipe. You know, I can't put the little parentheses on my fucking name, but you know. Damn. They call me Pipe, but they call me Pipe. Um, I'm really not on Snapchat or none of that shit. Twitter, I think I'm still under uh, at Wonderlust underscore Pipe. Just find me on Instagram, though, trust. They call me Pipe. And then you can find me the weekends at the club. Absolutely, you guys, again. Thank you, Jonathan, from Culture and Colas. Great Whoop. podcast. A great new episode just came out. You don't want to miss it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And this was Knowledge, Nonsense, and Reasoning. Find us, subscribe, like it, love it. Your girlfriend does, but we love you.